Hello, this is BJ Shaw, your National Director, and today we have a very special guest with us, Kunal Vadani. Kunal has been with us, uh, he's actually going to be completing 10 years in a few months with BNI, so a decade in BNI. Um, and, uh, you know, not only is Kunal a member, but of course he's one of our senior director consultants. Um, he launched the BNI Champions chapter over five years ago, and they celebrated five years as well a few months ago. Um, so Kunal launched the BNI Champions. He continues to support them. Uh, but additionally, Kunal also had the opportunity to support BNI Rising Phoenix. And he did that for about two and a half years. Um, he has just been assigned to support the BNI Energizers chapter. So, you know, he brings a lot of experience with him. Um, he also serves on the Global DC Champions team. This is, uh, you know, a group which was formed very recently by BNI Global uh, with uh, champions or DCs or top DCs from different parts of the world. And they meet regularly. And the whole idea really is to represent director consultants uh, from across the world to share best practices and provide valuable feedback to BNI Global to make the whole DC role impactful. So welcome Kunal and uh, it's great to have you on board over here. Thanks, thanks Vijay. Uh, thank you for the lovely introduction. It's awesome to be here as well. So Kunal, today I have some questions for you around your experience as a director consultant. Um, you know, BNI Champions is a chapter that you launched and you currently continue to support it. If you look at the, um, the history of our chapter, then generally in BNI, chapters tend to go through cycles. Um, so you have your peaks and your troughs, um, and, and most, most chapters will do that. Uh, but Champions is, in my opinion, a unique chapter. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's been a good, healthy chapter right from the beginning i don't really recall any major ups and downs unless uh, they have not been shared with me but you know from my interactions with you from what i see on paper the reports um they were the chapter of the year uh, earlier this year when we had our our annual event um and uh, i just wanted to ask you you know what do you attribute to to this success because this is incredible so uh, in all honesty, uh, you're aware, uh, Champions of the Chapter is very, very close to me. Uh, I launched them. It's been five uh, very, very successful years. They have a very, very high seat value. Uh, but beneath that, I, I think what's unique about that chapter is the culture that they carry. I know every chapter has their own culture, but they have a culture of care. Uh, the amount of love every member has for the larger group is something I have never noticed in other chapters. Like each member wants to support every other member to do better, not just business-wise in life. And they believe in taking everyone together as they grow as a chapter. They're not trying to compete, but they're really trying to create value for the members who exist in the chapter. And I think that above business is what makes sure that they are stable. Uh, they aren't afraid to be second or third or fourth as long as they're sure that they're creating value for each and every member. So that attitude of care that all these leadership teams have had through the years has, is what has made their culture so strong and so unique that I wish everyone could replicate it. Yeah, the, their credo, I believe, is business with heart, right? Something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And they um, came up with it. Uh, they have their own yes, values. Yes, yes. It's, yeah, it's different. In addition to the BNI values, yeah, they have their own set of uh, values, or core values yeah. as a chapter as well. So talking about culture, I mean, you know, it is people at the end of the day. Um, did this happen by design or, you know, how did that happen? So if we wanted to replicate that, you know, if we're launching another chapter, if another chapter, if somebody from another chapter is listening to this, uh, what are the takeaways, you know, what, what are kind of, kind of things that they need to look into to create that sort of culture? So uh, that's, that's a very, very uh, important question, I believe, because firstly, I'm not sure I have the answer. Uh, I would love to believe it was by design, but I do think 
they manage to pick the right members. So I would say that for anybody or any chapter listening in, pick quality over quantity. We are not here to just grow for the sake of growing. The minute you get in the right kind of members, uh, the chapter just switches on and business just happens and that brings in more better members and the right kind of members. So it's like a cycle, a positive cycle that you need to start. And when you're launching a chapter, of course, everyone is a bit worried as to will we find those 25, 30 people to launch the chapter in the right amount of time. However, at that point, we must remind ourselves to stick to the quality. So I'm not sure if many people know that champions grew to about 11, then we reduced it back to three. And then we grew again before we finally launched them, which is where the real change happened, I believe. I, I think that's an important point that you raised, and I'm glad that you shared that. Uh, yeah, if you're listening into this, um, so you grew the core group to 11. Um, obviously, it was far from launch. 11 is still not adequate. We need at least 25. But even with 11, you actually trimmed it down all the way down to like three or four. And yeah. then you rebuilt it again. Am I correct? Yes, we had no choice. Uh, the others weren't pulling their weight. Okay. It, the chapter wouldn't have been launched had we not trimmed it down. Thank you for and that. Funnily, so, yes, three members um, are in the chapter in, still. Trim, trimming, yeah. So, so that's at core group level. So, I guess something similar can be applied even in existing chapters, right? So, uh, there, there is this uh, whole um, podcast which is called um, Addition by Subtraction by Dr. Meisner. And I think it's along the same lines. Absolutely. Um, you, need grow, you need to trim down. So, Kunal, you know, a few years ago, you had the opportunity to also support another uh, chapter which has been around for a while and it's another strong chapter the rising phoenix um so you know having this culture already set at champions and this is your baby champions was a chapter that you launched um and then when you had the opportunity to support rising phoenix not that it was going through any major challenges um, rising phoenix itself has had its share of ups and downs uh, in fact um, you know, back in uh, in the days um, when Rising Phoenix was only probably a couple of years old, they had to rebrand themselves. Uh, they were called uh, Business Eagles, I believe, um, and uh, they went through a tough time. And that's why they actually called Rising Phoenix because they rose from the ashes. So, so those members have been through that. But then, you know, over the last few years, um, members come and go into chapters. If you look at Rising Phoenix today probably only about two or three of the members right from those days are still with them. So the 90% or more than 90% of the chapter is made up of um, members uh, who are relatively, I, w I wouldn't say new, but you know, post uh, that phase. So it was a chapter which was probably fairly stable. Um, what was your experience like going into support a chapter which has got so many members? It's been around for a long, long time. It's got a legacy. Um, but yet, it probably may not have, you know, it has a different culture. Um, so how did you adjust to that and what was your experience? So uh, it, it was very, very different. As an experience, uh, Rising Phoenix was very, very, very different to what I'm used to when I'm uh, working at Champions as the DC. So for me, when I went into Rising Phoenix, I had a lot of members who were senior to me in BNI. So if I was an X years old in BNI, they were way, way more in BNI. So they knew what BNI is. They knew how to fix it uh, if there was something wrong. So the first thing I had to do is understand what the culture is of the chapter compared to champions where I am aware of what the culture is because we set it together. So for me, uh, it was amazing. I learned a lot at Rising Phoenix. Probably I would say it's been one of the best learning experiences I've had in BNI because going into a chapter which is well established and trying to establish that respect that a DC needs to receive from his or her teams was something that I had to really work towards. I made my mistakes. I was given feedback. I learned. We improvised. And then we started caring for the chapter and the chapter responded. That's, that's pretty much what happened at Rising Phoenix in a nutshell. I made some friends for life and I, I can't thank you enough for the opportunity. 
So what advice would you have for anybody looking to consider a role in the DNA team, you know, ambassadors, directly consultants, because this is this is what you go through, right? Uh, you get a chance sometimes to launch chapters, you may be assigned chapters to support. Uh, you start your journey as an ambassador, of course. Um, so when people are vying for these kind of roles, wanting to step up, uh, what are the kind of things that they should consider? Because our team continues to grow, we get more and more people wanting to step up, which is great. But just like you say, it's all about culture and we want to make sure that we attract the right people on the team. So what are your tips and what's your advice to anybody looking at a role in the so, DNA? So I look at it from uh, two perspectives, to be honest. One, I would tell anyone who's looking to step up to do it for the right reasons. Yes, a, stepping up to a role does give you a lot of visibility, but I don't think generating more business should be the reason why you become uh, an ambassador or director consultant. That will be a byproduct as you go along, of course, uh, but I would say do it for the right reasons. If someone is actually wanting to give back to the community and that's the reason why they're doing it, I think that is absolutely what one should consider uh, when they're joining. If someone feels a lot of gratitude towards BNI because they've received a lot like I have, uh, whose lives have changed because of BNI like mine, it's to give back is what the attitude needs to be. It's a service rather than a role is what I believe in when you're looking at an ambassador or director consultant. So don't do it for the business, do it to help and the business will follow is, is my advice to anyone looking to join. So that's another form of uh, give us gain, I believe. Give us gain to the core, right? I because agree. Not just yeah. about business, but really giving back. Um, so Kunal, you've just been assigned uh, another chapter. Uh, this time it's the BNI Energizers, which has just been announced. Um, what is your objective uh, with this chapter and how do you plan to support them? Wow. Uh, so yeah, uh, I have been assigned to BNI, BNI Energizers and it's amazing to another, get another legacy chapter on hand, which has been a great chapter as well, uh, historically. Uh, in all honesty, my first step is to really understand uh, how what, what makes the chapter work, uh, what are some of the things the chapter is looking to fix, what is the long-term goal of the members, is everyone receiving what they should. Uh, in terms of support, I'll, I, I'll try and do what I do best, uh, try and set the culture and processes and I'm hoping that the members together can stitch that fabric back and become a super performing chapter like they've always been. That's, that's pretty much my objective when I go into Energizers because I know some of them and I know they have some great, great members and I'll need all their support to start this because honestly, I don't think anyone can lead a chapter without actually getting to know every single member and why they are a part of that chapter. Yeah, so start with building these relationships. Energize is a great chapter. You know, it was our first, what we call a Hall of Fame chapter, yeah. um, which means that when it launched over seven years ago, um, it was the first chapter to actually launch with over 35 members. Um, so they have a good, strong start they have a number of core group members right from those days, you know, founding members. Um, so I wish you all the best in, in, in that, and I'm sure they're looking forward to, to that as well. Um, you know, Kunal, you're also, in addition to all this, you're of course, uh, continue to be an active and contributing member in your chapter. So when you're supporting BNI chapters, in addition to being, uh, you know, an active and contributing BNI members, with the additional responsibilities sometimes of even uh, taking other leadership roles in the chapter that you're a member in. Um, that can be quite time consuming, um, especially when you're running uh, your own business, which also continues to grow. Um, so how do you manage all that? Because, you know, a lot of things, uh, a lot of times people, people tend to say, OK, hold on, do I have time for all this? What's your formula? What's, what's your secret? In, in managing all this um, and, and yeah. yet, you know, being able if to you go ask my wife, uh, to be very honest, she doesn't think I do any business. I'm doing only uh, BNI in all honesty, according to her. Uh, but it's, it's the same thing. You remove time for the important things in life. Uh, for me, BNI has been a life changing experience. And to be honest, it makes me happy. It's a part of my life, which is positively influencing every day that I wake up. 
and I love being a part of BNI and doing all the roles that I do. So I try and do my bit. If you ask me if there's a secret to producing more time, unfortunately, there isn't. You just got to give up on some things and focus on things that are priorities for you. Uh, so being a member, yes, I've always loved being a member. But however, taking on the DC role, I would say I am not as effective as a member as I used to be, for sure. Like it does take away some part of your time from doing your regular one-to-ones or inviting visitors or generating referrals. I do my bit. I do my bit to contribute to the chapter that I'm part of. Uh, but it's it's just that you've got to manage your time and take time out for things that are important. And BNI is extremely important for me. So I guess it's just prioritizing. <laughs> so Kunal, you know, you'll be celebrating, like I say, the 10 years very soon uh, in BNI. Uh, what uh, and where would you like to see the BNI community in the UAE uh, over the coming years? What 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 do you see uh, is possible for BNI uh, in the years to come over here? So I actually think uh, UAE being a global hub for a lot of businesses in the world, I think the community in UAE should be at an ideal position to expand globally with the support of our BNI network. I think one thing that we really, really need to focus on as a region is leveraging BNI internationally. So there are a lot of international events happening, but we've so far been very focused internally towards UAE. And now that the world seems to expand, I do believe the members need to go out there and explore newer countries, newer regions, probably even geographies in terms of businesses together and the collaboration can be taken to a whole new level. Like we have an opportunity to truly be a global BNI uh, platform here in the UAE because we are connected to those many countries. Expo is a prime example where actually if we decided to go to the Expo and start connecting with countries and BNI is in those countries, I think the results would be astounding. So I do think in a few years, our members should be in a position to say, they have visited multiple countries, met various members of BNI in different countries, and now they are successfully doing businesses. That, that's incredible, Kunal. You know, it looks like we're probably um, thinking along the similar lines. And the fact that you're part of the DC Champions at the global level, uh, I don't know if you're in the know, but uh, the theme when it comes to 22 and beyond is really, you know, it's, it's about better together. What can we achieve together and leverage? And if you look at uh, the technology that we've been able to invest in over the last um, you know, over a couple of years, especially given the current situation, um, there's an opportunity to, to use and embrace that technology to connect uh, at a global level. Uh, just this morning, I received two messages. One was from a member in Poland and another one from a member in Latvia, uh, both of whom are visiting uh, Dubai in the next uh, few weeks um, and, and you know Expo of course is a big attraction uh, but yeah like you rightly say I think there's a big opportunity for us to to leverage that and, and really connect uh, with other markets I know you have been part of um, a group that went to uh, for example Uganda and explored opportunities there and I know that some members in the group have um, continued to, to do business so I think we can do more of that and um, we can look forward to that, and especially in 2022. More yeah. uh, global networking and, and really connecting people at that level. Could I, I actually think, think so we should have like trade missions to different countries. Yes, so. yes, we should take actually trade missions, business yeah, delegations. We should. Like, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. Well, if anybody is listening to this and, and they like the idea of being part of trade missions, business delegations, please do reach out to us. Uh, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to Kunal, um, and we'd love to hear from you because, um, you know, this is uh, basically the way forward uh, for BNI. So with that, Kunal, I'd like to thank you so much for your time again today and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you, Vigil. Thank you.